I'm Alan Lawrence of WonderTouch, and in this tutorial we'll take a look at Particle View, our free application that allows you to load and view the emitters, or effects, contained in any Particle Illusion emitter library file. Particle Illusion is the application that lets you design these particle emitters and add them to your videos or animation, but that's a topic for another tutorial. When you launch Particle View the first time, you may see a progress dialog as the search index is being rebuilt. Depending on the speed of your computer and the number of emitter libraries you have on your system, this can take 30 seconds or more. If this is not the first time you've run Particle View, you may instead see a message asking if you want to rebuild the search index. If you've just downloaded new emitter libraries or made major changes to your existing libraries, you want to rebuild the index, otherwise you can skip the rebuilding step. You may also be asked to find an emitter library to load, but usually you won't need to. Okay, once the library is loaded, you'll see an emitter animating in an OpenGL window. Click and drag around the window to see how the emitter behaves. You can switch to other emitters in the library using either the mouse wheel or the left and right arrow keys on the keyboard, or the menu commands if you're using the Mac version. The emitter number, total number of emitters in the current library, and emitter name are shown in the title bar. The library name should also be displayed, but depending on the version you're using, you may not see it. Some emitters are meant to be moved slowly, some quickly, while others are intended to remain stationary. The library installed with Particle View is just a sampler library. There are dozens of other free libraries available for download from our website. To see the other functions that are available in Particle View, such as zooming, motion blur, changing the background color, look at the emitter menu on the Mac version, or press F1 on the Windows version. Here the Windows version shows a list of functions and the keys to access them. These same single key shortcuts work on the Mac version too, so even though in the Mac version Command B is the listed in the emitter menu as the shortcut to toggle motion blur, you can just press the B key alone. One note about motion blur, you'll see some emitters with MB at the end of their names. These emitters were designed to be used with motion blur and probably won't look their best with motion blur off. Most of these other functions are self-explanatory, so I won't go into them here, but repeat probably needs a little explanation. If you look at an emitter that has a definite end, such as an explosion, repeat determines how long to wait until the emitter starts over. If the effect hasn't died out before the display starts over again, you should probably increase the repeat value if you want to see what's going on. Grab, using the G key, takes a snapshot of whatever is being displayed in the particle view window and saves it to a targa, or TGA, file with a name like pview000.tga. The number will increment if you save additional images, so you won't overwrite images. The files are saved in your My Documents folder, or Documents on Mac, in a WonderTouch Particle View folder. If you're using the Mac version 3.2.0 of Particle View, the files are probably being saved in the root folder of your drive due to a bug. If you're finding it difficult to grab an image at just the time you want it, Use the spacebar to pause the emitter's animation, then grab the frozen image. The image function turns on an image in the background of the window, which is the only way to see what some of the emitters do. If you select an emitter and nothing shows in the window, even after changing the background color, then you probably need to turn on the image. At this time, the image can't be changed. The Don't Erase feature is a nice way to paint the window with particles, and you can create some really interesting images with it. When playing around with this feature, the screen can be erased by pressing the E key twice quickly to toggle Don't Erase off and then back on. It's also a good idea to experiment with motion blur when using Don't Erase. It can really smooth out the painting effect of the particles. Okay, the ability to grab images is cool, but what else can you do with Particle View? How about being able to run Particle View full screen and hide the cursor? We've gotten a lot of requests from people who wanted to use Particle View for live performance, so we've added both of these features. Press M to maximize the window, and press H to hide the cursor. Like most Particle View functions, these are toggles, so press M again to restore the bordered window, and H again to unhide the cursor. Finally, we come to what may be the most important Particle View feature, at least for Particle Illusion users, searching. Press S to open the search window, now just start typing a keyword of any emitter name, such as smoke. As you can see, as I type, Particle View fills in the rest of any keywords that it has in the index. When the term you want is displayed, press Enter, or Return on Mac keyboards, 
or click the search button and you'll see a list of all the emitters with the word smoke in their names. Also shown is the library name and the path to the library. Click on any emitter in this list and its library is loaded and the main particle view window will show the selected emitter. There are over 2300 emitters included with Particle Illusion 3 at this time and they're all available for download from the WonderTouch website and can be viewed in Particle View. Plus, we release more free emitters every month. If you want to see a list of all the emitters that you have on your system, at least the ones in the search paths, do a blank search with the OR option selected. My search here shows that I have more than 2300 emitters. That's because I also have the Pro emitters, which are a collection of 360 additional high quality emitters that we sell, and a few extra demo libraries that contain some of my favorite emitters from other libraries. By default, Particle View will only search the Emitter Libraries folder and subfolders for emitter libraries. If you have emitter libraries in a different location, you can use the Add Path button to select a library file. Particle View will then add that path to the search information, and all libraries found in that folder will be indexed the next time the index is updated, which is the next time Particle View is run. You can also manually edit the search paths. This is the only way to delete a path from the search information. To summarize, with Particle View you can view any particle illusion emitter, grab an image, switch to full screen mode, and search for emitters. Hope you enjoy using it. Remember to visit wondertouch.com for information on Particle Illusion, the tool used to create all of these great emitters and to download more free emitter libraries for Particle View. This is Alan Lawrence of WonderTouch. Thanks for watching.